We had a very interesting corporate bug sweep a while back that ended in a very unusual way. The bug we found, yes, we did find a bug on the sweep, was not your typical everyday spy gadget you would get online. The client was a larger financial services company that had multiple support centers around the state. These support centers were essentially inbound call centers where their clients would call in to make and to confirm financial transactions. The company also had some very high-tech physical security set up throughout the facilities. They had cameras on every workstation pointing at the employee and at the employee's keyboard. And they recorded every call that came in and the employee's computer was recorded during the transaction so they knew everything that happened when every client called them. There was little room for error, little room for mistakes, and little room for fraud, or so the client thought. One of the unique services we provide alongside of our TSCM bug sweeps is to evaluate the security of the facility or residence we are doing the sweep in. And with this client, we found several areas of concern when it came to security despite all their physical security devices, processes, and procedures. Now, if you want to ensure your PI business is secured and protected properly, then check out this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance. Visit OREP.org for a quote today. As we were doing our sweep, we observed that there was some IT work being done inside of the facility. They had an outside IT company that was upgrading their network systems and running new network and phone cables. Now this might seem to be perfectly normal and at first glance it did appear perfectly normal. However, as we reviewed our notes, some staggering concerns came up. I had done a pre-sweep walkthrough of this facility with the client a few days prior to the sweep, which is something we often do on these type of sweeps, so we have a better idea of what the facility looks like and what steps we need to take while doing the sweep. The walkthroughs are usually under the guise of being a potential client, so there are no suspicions raised as we are walking through and taking notes and being introduced to employees throughout the facility. During this walkthrough, I had noticed the IT company working and installing the new cables, and I I noticed they were running cables above the drop ceiling in the facility, which is quite normal in and of itself. But I had snapped a few photos while I was there on my visit, and when we did the sweep, well, I snapped a few more photos. And when I compared those pictures I noticed, much to my surprise, there were many ceiling tiles removed for access when I initially walked through that were still removed several days later when we did the sweep. And when I took the reports to the client a few days after the sweep, I noticed those tiles were still missing. This was identified as an easy target area for someone to utilize to put in a camera or audio recording device. Now, we didn't see any evidence of that, but someone could have easily slipped something up there and removed it later. You see, the employees often were repeating information back to the clients on the phone, like social security numbers, names, addresses, and even account numbers. But that wasn't the biggest thing we found by far. There were several other security threats we saw during the sweep too. One of them was the Bluetooth phone sets the employees were using. These stood out to us because almost every one of them was turned on and transmitting a signal. And we were doing the sweep during off hours when the center was essentially closed. We were able to demonstrate how simply this could be used to listen into the entire area by simply taking one of the base systems and pairing it with two sets of headphones. We then took the second pair of cordless headphones and sat in our vehicle outside of one of the windows and were able to hear and record the conversations going on inside. This very much startled our client. They were shocked at how easily it was done and how easily it could go undetected even considering all of the security they had installed. And then we showed them the cameras. You remember, every work center had a camera on it that was recording the employee and their hands on the keyboard, and guess what? Almost all of those cameras were still turned on. We could tell because of the lights on the front of the cameras. But even worse, almost all of the computers were still turned on too, and we could just move the mouse or hit the keyboard and voila, there was the computer's desktop. Many didn't even have a password set up on them. We were just right there on the Windows desktop, able to access the computer fully as well 
as sensitive network drives too. But the real threat we were looking for involved a key member of the company's top management team who was recently terminated with cause. Now this member of management would have had access to all of those supposedly secured systems. They would have been able to listen in on calls, watch the cameras, watch the recordings and everything. And the manager in question also had after hours access so they could roam freely through the facility at any time by themselves and plant whatever type of devices they wanted to plant and inspect any system that they wanted to inspect. That brought us to yet another security threat the company had, and that was any manager had after hours access anytime. They had to log into the security system when they came in, but it had zero time limits set, and there was no alert system set up to tell security someone was there or how often someone came in and left. Sure, they could review the log files and see when people came and went, and they could review security footage to see what they were doing, but that wasn't part of their normal procedures at that time. And the real threat we found wouldn't have been detected even with proper procedures and protocols for doing those types of security reviews. You see, the concern the client had was that this very high level member of management was working with one of their competitors and was stealing clients and confidential information right from under their noses. They knew there was one competitor in particular that always seemed to be one step ahead of them, always showed up with a better deal for prospective clients of theirs, and it seemed to happen way too often to be a coincidence. Now, I had said this manager had been terminated with cause, but that cause wasn't directly related to these suspicions. It was a lesser offense, but it allowed them, nonetheless, to eliminate the threat in a timely manner and without the manager becoming suspicious before the termination. This means any bugs planted and evidence of security breaches could not be removed or covered up, and this was key to the entire investigation. You see, all of those potential security breaches and threats we discovered and brought to the client's attention were never directly tied to the suspect manager. But this told the client they had a lot more work to do to truly secure their facility. They had clients they worked with that literally had millions of dollars of financial transactions conducted by this one facility on a daily basis. When we conducted the actual sweep, we ran our near-field radio frequency detector, and we ran our thermal infrared sweeps, and we ran the IR sweep, and we ran the spectrum analyzer sweep, and everything else. And we did our physical inspection, searching every nook and every cranny with eyes, hands, and inspection cameras. Then we found one device that could have jeopardized the entire operations for the client. This one device was what the manager used to transmit data from the facility even when the manager was not present. This one device was a simple flip phone, you know, one of those disposable cell phones, but not a smartphone, a flip phone. And why would they use a flip phone? Well, first off, it was one of those pay-as-you-go phones, so there was no contract, no activation, just buy it and some time cards and away you go with no way to trace it, or so the manager thought. You see, those flip phones have some seriously long battery life. Even when they're connected on a call, that battery can last for days with some models. This phone was found in the suspect manager's office in a bottom drawer that was always left open. After we identified it to the clients, they even remember that this drawer was always open. And this office was right next to the corporate boardroom and next to the CEO's office, all within an earshot of this cell phone. The client filed a police report, and working with their corporate attorneys and the police, we were able to track the phone to the suspected manager. But even that wasn't as simple as you would think. Many times people think you can run a phone number in some magical database, or there is some forensic way to evaluate the cell phone signal and see who it belongs to. What we had to do in this case was subpoena the phone manufacturer's records to see when and where this unit was built and then follow its trail through the sales channels after it had left the factory. And that trail led to a little convenience store where the phone was purchased, but when we received the store's records, it indicated it was paid for with cash. But it also indicated it was purchased along with another cell phone and many phone cards. So we then subpoenaed their security records and were lucky that they still had footage from that day long ago. And the video showed the suspect manager was the individual who purchased the phone. And the phone company records indicated that the phone only made phone calls to the other phone 
the manager had purchased. What the manager did was wired a headphone jack from the second phone that was hooked up to a computer to record everything and could simply listen to conversations whenever desired. You see, the bugs and threats we identify are not always cameras hidden inside of clocks, plants, books, and things like that. Not all bugs are transmitting all of the time or any time for that matter. In fact, when we found this phone, the battery had been long dead, but our physical inspection was what identified it. And if you want to hear more about the equipment we use in a bug sweep and more types of real bugs you can find out there in the world, then check out this video.